the other part one, I'm not going to open up to questions, so I did invite the gentleman uh, there, and then I'll bring the lady in there, and then we'll open from there. Uh, John talking about the letter the 12th of September, I brought it in, and I don't think the person who wrote it knew what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. they, it's contradictory. The text in the letter contradicts the drawing. I'm a chartered surveyor. I can't understand it. Thank you. I'm certain that Mr. O'Grady, who put the letter together and looked at the drawings, they're just they're not coordinated so with one another. How will the people who live in the area be able to understand it? I don't think you would, Mr. Foster. Have you read it? Yes. I read it at the time. And you can understand it? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Simply because I took one look at the need to go back to school. <laughs> Sorry, I'd I, I just like to clarify the letter and, and uh, Mr. Hunter is correct, it was never meant to be a confrontation on, on the demolition. Um, Secretary of State, we have to apply to the Secretary of State if we want to sell or dispose of playing fields in particular. Uh, so again, unfortunately, and I, I do, I do uh, in some, some respects agree about uh, if, if this was left to the council, it could be clearer, but it is a standard form of, of text that is given to us by the Secretary of State. So the second paragraph as referred to by Mr. Humphrey there, sorry, can I, John, yeah, yeah, uh, true. Is, is, true. is around that is text that was given. So that has to go in every letter to fulfil, again, the legislative process that is set out by, by the Secretary of State. The third paragraph, I think, clearly states um, buildings and um, uh, playing fields that the Council will dispose of, play, etc. And again, that's a requirement by the Secretary of State. The drawing very clearly articulates the, the buildings and playing fields. So again, whilst I accept the second paragraph is a confusing paragraph, that is something that is required by law that we, we, we send to all of those people. So again, whilst I accept the second paragraph adds an element of um, uh, contradiction, I would say that the rest of it was there to, to hopefully clarify. If I, if I could just... Sorry. Right. We'll, we'll this sort of demolition, uh, Joe Lord, or Joe Lord, or Joe Lord, whatever what, you know, label that you want to put on it. Does that actually involve the caretaker's house as well? No. no that's, that's been sold. Oh, that, that's been sold without the public's knowledge. Yes. 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 It's excluded off this plan. Yes. It's excluded off the plan. Yes. So in fact, you excluded the caretaker's house as not a frontage of a building that matches up with that so-called house. And how and that has been sold beforehand, and um, the building itself not being sold beforehand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can, I, can I just yeah. clarify that? Yeah. The caretaker's house is the property of Durham County Council. The caretaker's house is not part of the school. The caretaker's house remains Durham County Council's property. I'm not aware of yeah. being sold, and I don't think the caretaker is. I was taught to report my school, and she's still there. Because it wasn't, it wasn't, part, part, of the it wasn't part of the educational bit of the school when the school was transferred to the trust. So it's, it's now where it's a separate, it's, it's, it's an asset it could well come to life. I did promise to bring that lady in there. All right. What I want to say is we're going to talk about the Secretary of State. Before the end of this meeting, please could have as many as email address, his contact. No doubt it's going to have some comments. So, if you can have a detail of the Secretary of State, you need to go into that. So, all these details, and no doubt, someone would like to email them. The date of the Secretary of State at the time of this action took place uh, is no longer there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Mr. Gold has done many, many things I wish I'd love to email him about. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm happy, I'm happy to provide you that. His email address, we want to know his name, and we want to have the contact then. So if we just like to say, the Secretary of State of Education has a problem, or what we do, I'm going to send a petition or something like that. Uh, I'm happy there, because the Secretary of State of Education is very close to us. Just the time. If you push that into Google, 
you'll get fresh oil from it. You'll find them extremely helpful. And they told me that there was nothing whatsoever to prevent German mothers who have been out of size the minute they decide to close it, or even ten years before. They might not have been able to search without a Secretary of State's agreement, but there was nothing to stop them from advertising. It sounds a little bit like Windows in Hall. We did say we were going to focus on this issue tonight, and I've answered many questions. Well, here's my answer to Wilson Hall in one month since. We saved, we received £241,000 for a building we couldn't sell and couldn't use. We saved £3 million in essential work that had to be done straight away. I've so far saved £600,000 in minor maintenance security bill. I am going completely off this uh, Yes, because I'm politically responsible for it. So now can we focus back on what we're supposed to be doing, which is about the school building at the moment. Lady there. If the school building was deemed not habitable or whatever, capturing the nature of the world, why is the saloon crew um, being able to, to still enjoy gently in there? And this store, where does the money go? Absolutely. Yes, certainly it is. In fact, the reason that George Gently ever used that school was because I put them in that direction. I was at a meeting. No, I was at a meeting of the Northern School and Media. It's no secret. I did it and it was saying because the first couple of series that were supposed to be set in Durham weren't filmed anywhere near Durham. And we finally persuaded them to come up and do some filming in Durham and then to be located in Durham. And they were originally located at Winnie Hill, which is part of the Durham Johnson School. But the condition of that building, if anybody ever saw that series, and I've had two of the school anyway, well, they're having difficulties with it. So we're back again to do it here or do it in New York. So the cast around couldn't find anywhere to go. And I suggested the school. They came in, loved the school, because it was a big open space that they were in it. A lot of temporary fixes were done to make sure that they could actually do the filming. And it was interesting because I did get a chance to tour it while I was filming how they managed to make things work. The biggest problem was the delay in transmission. It should have been transmitted in the autumn of last year, about this time last year. Eventually it was transmitted in the February March of the following year. We'd, all, we'd agreed, well the customers agreed and, and I supported them doing it, of doing a deal with the, with the company to keep everything on site so we didn't have to take it down and put it back up again. But that delay of six months in actually getting the commissioning done meant that the condition of the school is in the difficulties that we had and given the gifts that we had, they had to be sold. So we had to be sold. I generally don't know how much. You don't know. No, because I didn't. So that would have gone indeed, indeed, indeed. No. 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 So the money from the television company which was paid. We've got four, three payments, I think, over the six months. Three payments of what? Could we have the figures? I can't remember offhand. I, was, oh, I can get them for No, I can get them for you. That's not a, a, that is not a secret. No. That money came into, into the trust, right? We have to pay up front. Could I say, I've been a trustee myself, and if I was coming to a meeting like this, I would have in front of me all the documentation and the trustees will have, including what George Jenkins, what decades to be in the future. I did not think that would be relevant. Well, However, yeah, you've asked the question, the question was what happens to the money? Yes. In order for the TV company to come in on site, we have to put Temporary fixes as regards the water, we have to put electricity, we have to do all sorts of services. Obviously, they've got a vast health and safety requirement. They did not use the whole site because the whole site was not needed by them, nor was it habitable for them. All the money that we had to spend in order to make it fit for their purpose, and that's just putting the utilities together. And uh, they did their own security and so on, we didn't pay for that. That all came out of staff funding. Plus the extra cost that we had, which was for staff costs and so on. 
We paid for all the utilities, they paid the amount of gas, electricity that they actually so used. Well, it's 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 out of trust accounts around companies like that. Gentlemen, now. I think the question has been answered because what my fear is is that what you got from the secondary state hasn't been transferred to Durham County Council. It's been twisted around to suit Durham County Council. No, I, I should have made it clear. Durham County Council are acting as a trust agent in the marketing of the system. And everything that goes with that. I'm trying to get a few more people. What do you know about the infrastructure? What's going to happen to Durham Road when you've got houses built on the school field? There, we've got, I mean, we've got the um, football field. You can't get moved to traffic there. You've got traffic. It, it is a, a, a traffic nightmare going along Durham Road. What is actually going to happen when these houses are going to be built? And we know. This may be known that it's going to be built anyhow because it's going to align the county council's property. Right. The, obviously, there was, there was matters that we dealt with as part of the planning for, for that site, if that site goes forward. But there is a part of the site which is a bit, effectively, where the old uh, swim pool used to be, if anybody's familiar with that. But that side of the building actually belongs to King Street School. So that, that site will be left the way it is. It's part of the King Street School's allocation of playing fields. Gentlemen there, gentlemen there. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I understand that you I understand that you are the chairman of this regeneration committee, is that right? I'm the cabinet member for regeneration. Right. And the member of the fair way, can you tell me how many members are on that committee? And how many members of that committee actually have an affiliation with our town? The cabinet's made up of, of ten members. Uh, How many are from our town fighting our corner? That's what I'm asking. I'm the only uh, cabinet member from, from Spenny Road. So you're the nine members of the more affiliation to our town, is that fair? No, but there's, 120, that's all, that's all. there's 126 that's all. elected members of this that's authority, all, that's all. all of which take our own responsibility. <laughs> I believe we need both, and I believe we need improved retail as well. And the way you get those things is, is to develop them together in a long-term plan. And there's a plan currently being discussed at the Riverside uh, Stadium in front of the inspector, which covers all these things. So there you go. I was doing this about Kibble Post. Yeah. It's very hitty mixing, we all know that. But Durham County Council were acting as the agent of the trust. So it's not from the school, it's from the trust from Durham County Council and it may be out by school. Is it now becoming. No, hang on one second. Can I bring that gentleman in, then I'll bring you back in. Yeah, Mr. Timmins, if I could go back to your point that you now recognise that there were failings in the letter itself. Did you communicate that to our elected representatives, knowing at some stage or other the public would be talking to them to actually get some clarification on this deal? The um, purpose of the letter was to allow us to dispose of the site, and, and that was the primary focus of that. Uh, again, and acting on behalf of the trust, um, we felt that we couldn't put forward, uh, again, um, we felt that it was only once we got that um, confirmation from the Secretary of State, because at this time, Secretary of State has taken uh, quite a long time to, to get responses back. It can take anywhere between um, seven months to two years, three years to get a response back from the Secretary of State. So in order to move this forward, it was important that we got um, the consultation on the disposal of the site. 
And that is due to the huge purpose of the letter. To our elected representatives that there was failings in that letter that they would need to answer. Sorry, there is no failing in the letter because it is a statutory requirement that we send out that letter. The failings there is, that we don't understand it. The, the failings are one of central government requirements to do this. And without doing this, then we can't move anything forward. So there is no failing from a county council point of view. You're telling me that common sense doesn't prevail in your department. I, I, what I'm saying is that <laughs> what, he, what he's saying quite delicately is we, we have to send out the, it, the letters as directed by the DFES. Yeah. And we have to follow them to the letter. Failure to do so, believe you me, as the person who had the cabinet responsibility for education, had to deal with this on a regular basis. The, their idea of clarity and my idea of clarity is completely different. Lady, the, you said to me, the requirements that we've got to set up that there's only a lot of people in that area. Are you allowed to expand on that in areas like this so that people actually did have to go through what's on there? You can go to an extent. Paragraph 3 is the expansion, and you can go so far on that. The difficulty that you fall into is if you uh, put too much information in, when it's when it's taken in front, you can review the walls and the demolition. No, no. You see, you see, it's not being clear at all on what you're trying to do. In a sense, it's it's the old argument that you set up a straw man and then you knock it down. That's that's what the challenge was legally. In the, in the, if if by expanding on it, you don't confuse the issue. That's that's where it's, it's difficult. Then the lady again. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Uh, from what I understand, that the school is a public building that belongs to us. It's one of our assets, and very important assets, especially to the local people as well. Because obviously, it's not our gas and so on. I think we've had that discussion before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but then, um, to the side, you know, that building belongs to us. The council. The council are custodians of our assets, public assets. Therefore, out of case, why don't the county council about a public meeting like this, proper public consultation, be easy enough when it was first thought out that they were going to dispose of the building? And the second part was also jobbing they were some that you like. Apparently, the Senate World Town Council, when asked, said they have no comments. Why couldn't, if the Town Council has a public meeting, why couldn't the Senate World Town Council have a public meeting to get a public views before the Town Council? Yeah. 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 We're going back a few years now, and it's to a time when uh, the then government uh, effectively said the local authorities can no longer build schools. They had an idea that uh, business sector groups, religious groups, and anybody else could build a school, but for some reason uh, the authority who's been involved in education for over 100 years could no longer build schools. I think that's wrong. I still think it's wrong. And that does lead us to some of the difficulties we've got now. But in a sense, we could not. So we had to take a chance. There was a risk that we could have allowed anybody else to uh, put forward a building for children, or we could look to create a trust amongst the two schools. We chose that option as our favourite option. Potentially anybody else could have been. There were uh, some possibility that the Galatopians could have, uh, sorry, the, the uh, creationist groups, there was a couple of those who were to develop schools, we could have had one of those schools. I, I'm vehemently against that, but that's my particular problem. <coughs> anyway, so in a sense, we have to transfer it over. We couldn't keep it. If there's only new school, we have to transfer that asset over to the trust. We believe by creating a trust made up of the governors of the two schools in the area, who are best near the area, the best serve the area, is the best way to do it. Right. At that time... Yeah. Main food, yeah. You've spoken for 20 minutes so far, I'm trying, I'm trying to be best. Well, like you're going over well the gentleman asked a question, and I'm trying to answer the questions that I'm being given. So at that point, that's how we transferred it over to because we thought that was the best way of doing it. Good. 
Could I, at that time, there wasn't something taken on how do we do that, and that's what we did. I did promise to bring you in. So I just, I'm not asking a question here, I'd just like to basically say, uh, I can't say we, because we don't, we haven't had the time to form a committee as such that we say that this is what we want. All I would say is, selfishly, I, I am not trying to criticise the, the, the review that was done about the schools. Whether it's the right thing, the wrong thing, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm no expert in that whatsoever. Um, whether, the, the, whether the school at the top of the town now actually serves the town in replacing three schools for one, we're not here to talk about that, ideally. I'm not trying to say about should there or should there not be in housing there. It's not my land. I can't really have an input on that. What I'm really trying to say is, I believe, personally, I was given a letter, very few people were given a letter, and I believe that that letter was worded in such a way it was to disguise what was going to happen. And in that same letter, it, it said it was going to be marketed on the open market. I believe that letter now says, we're not really telling you what we're going to do, but what we're going to do is we're going to demolish the school. And after we demolish the school, we're then going to put it up to sale as a part of land. Yeah. Yeah. And what I believe is, had that been made clear, then I think other actions would have taken place. That's, that's my objection, You're not being informed and not going on an open market. Two gentlemen over there, then I'll come back over to this side. Can I, can I make a point to you? I've listened to these, to these people and what they've been saying, but heritage is, is my side, I must agree. The thing about heritage, and this building is heritage, might not be this. Heritage of this town, it's heritage of these people. Yeah. And what you do is taking away their right to live in an area that they want to, in a manner that they like to live in, which gives them the memory and the connection with the town they are. Your proposal is to wipe out a hundred years of their heritage, yeah. their parents. transparency in these matters. Now I can understand from these people that that has not been the case. But it is their heritage. It's a building. But it's their heritage. And they have the right to be able to don't, don't put in. They have the right to be able to be involved and have participation in what Mr Timmins is proposing to do. But it's not being there. And that's, that is the right place for their heritage. And you're denying them this by running roughshod to this. Mm -hmm. Mr. Timmins, I don't think that your proposed method of demolishing this house is actually valid. I think you'll find that it's being amended in 2014. I can't guarantee that because I took council's advice today and did not come back to me. I would suggest and ask if you would check for that, that you actually have the right to demolish this building without the planning commission. Because I'm not sure you do. The third one, and then I'll let the people get into it because they need to let them know this, the marketing of this property. You say it hasn't been marketed, it hasn't been bought for sale. I was contacted by the, these people here on Friday, and we had three phone calls to heritage building companies who would take that place I bought as it is. All three said they were very interested. Now, why can't we put this up for sale? As part of what you trustee, that this was one of you have to be seen to get best market value. Now, it should be up for sale a long time ago. It should be put up for sale on a heritage site before you demolish it. And before you start demolishing, which I believe you already have, I'm told there are already things on the site. This should be marketed to specialist companies who deal in heritage buildings, their restoration and conservation, as well as the land at the back. Now, the way I look at this plan, the only way you can do that land at the back
where do you stand on this? Are you with the people of the town? Are you with the people of the school? I have a mix. I have a big mixed uh, post back on this one from those people who want to demolish and those people who want to stand. I have a duty, as somebody pointed out earlier on, the, the role of a counsellor is, is two things. Is it, it is a role as an advocate to make sure that my hands do the lifting you want me to do and my tongue does the speaking that you want me to do. But I've got to give you two other parts to that equation. I've got to give you my brain and my experience. So looking at my brain and my experience of where we are and what my experience is over the years that I've been involved as a counsellor right across the county in dealing with schools is in these circumstances I cannot find a use for that building that will not cost the public money that will do something that nobody else is able to do. There have been various suggestions on what could be done with it but nobody's come and found a, a, a way of doing it that doesn't cost the public purse money. So, well, I have, I, I have tried, I've had extensive conversations with various people, you know, in terms of what is the value of this land and how can we use it. One of the things I explored before was the possibility of, you know, student accommodation. Could we, could we explore that as a possibility for this town? Having spoken both to the students and to the university, and knowing what else is happening with accommodation in, in Durham, that, that, that was a non starter. Okay. So, you're sitting on the fence, aren't you? No, I'm not sitting on the fence. If you can find a way, if you can find a way of not costing the public purse for this building, finding a way of, of putting the money back into the community. But wouldn't it be better if you, as our representative, were working with us? But I equally, I equally represent those people who just want to demolish. Who are the people? <laughs> no, listen. Okay, my second question is, does your meeting stand the scooby of getting this changed? I don't know, scooby. Can we make a difference? Can we stop this in its tracks? No. Or not? Realistically, what I was looking for tonight... Again, that's pretty much yes or no. Well, yeah, what I'm looking for tonight is, is there a way of, of doing this that doesn't cost the public purse? And so far, I haven't heard of one or seen one. Yeah, I do apologise. Yeah. Just get a little bit. There is a, a, a work to be done on this, and that's the whole point of the Durham Plan. I know you don't like me to talk about the Durham Plan, but it is about planning things for, for the future for the next 20 years. There may well be the need for a new primary school in the town. <laughs> no, there isn't. There may well be. Well, two things, two things on that quickly. One is, in the last year, we've created more than 100 primary school places in, in Spennymoor. In the next year, we'll be creating another uh, series of, of spaces in the school. There is a feasibility study to be done as to whether we need a new primary school or whether we need enough primary places 
divided around about the practicums and whether that's the better way or not. I'm, I'm, I'll let the experts make suggestions on that one. But even if you were to go down the lines of having a new primary school, even on that site, you wouldn't be using that building. Now there is a, the only feature of that, that building which in any way, shape or form, it sort of, I think is, is unique, is the portico at the front. The doorway at the front. Now, even if we were to retain that, the rest of the, the, rest of the school, in terms of a, a brand new state-of-the-art primary school, you would not start from there. You would level the site and begin again. It will, but it's not as flexible, it's not as energy efficient. No, I'm a colour electrician. For 40 years of experience, and the government and the Secretary of State for Education always say that it is far cheaper to renovate the building than what it is to build a new one. You're spending £257,000 of the people's money in demolishing that building. You're saying you're not trying to spend it to waste money, you're just throwing £50 out of the building. Um, because there was, a, there was a trust that was based in the town, made up of the governors who lived in the town, who were familiar with both schools, and I thought that was the better option. Claire? That's, that's our point. But then, what are you going to do with the building? What are you going to do with the building? Yeah, I'll bring you in and I'll bring Claire in and then I'll bring that gentleman in.